from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I am Estefania Bravo, and this is From the South. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro is confident of a win at the upcoming general election. Maduro said that in the 19 years since the beginning of the Bolivarian Revolution, 24 elections have taken place, of which the government won 22. He believes that Hugo Chávez's legacy has helped him garner 55% of intended votes for the April 22nd poll. In an interview with state media, Maduro rebuked comments that his numbers were questionable. Regarding the U.S. and the opposition stance of non-participation in the coming elections, President Maduro said they had been painted into a corner by clear numbers that didn't run in their favor. I am giving you true numbers, scientifically measured between the candidate Nicolás Maduro versus any candidate that the opposition could have. The United States Embassy has these numbers. The opposition also has these numbers. This is why they have shifted to a bad, dangerous and self-destructive position to get themselves out of the electoral competition. With regard to self-criticism, corruption was an important theme. The Venezuelan president highlighted that corruption is being fought through the Constituent National Assembly. We could talk about the corruption issue. In a country where there was an immense wealth over 100 years, a culture of bribery and corruption was created. And unfortunately, this reached the highest authorities in the oil industry. Now, we can say, to balance the self-criticism that fortunately, with the power of the National Constituent Assembly, a truly strict persecution against any corruption case has started. President Maduro also talked about progress in oil production recovery in the country. There are several factors a factor that has to do with the compliance of the fees with OPEC. An important reduction in the country's fees was established. There is a second factor, the corruption and the inefficiency of the heads of the oil industry that were involved in corruption cases. This led to an important reduction of one million of oil barrels. We're recovering it. Fortunately, I think that in the first semester of this year, we will recover 70% of the production that was affected by the factors that I am saying. With respect to the presidential elections and the position of the opposition, the Venezuelan president reiterated the provision to maintain constitutional guarantees to all Venezuelans who want to run. In Venezuela, whoever wants to be a candidate will have all the guarantees. In fact, they are the same the opposition had in 2015 when they beat us in National Assembly elections. As for the April 22nd presidential elections, Maduro said that before, during and after the elections, it will call for dialogue despite the opposition's reluctance to talk and fear of compromise. The Venezuelan president criticized comments previously made by U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, which he deemed to be antagonistic. Maduro said on Tillerson's suggestion the army could state a coup is offensive. When imperialism and the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson calls on Venezuelan military officials to undertake a coup, he's offending the Bolivarian dignity of our Bolivarian National Armed Forces and our Bolivarian National Armed Forces respond with the 2018 military independence exercise and cry out, independence and socialist fatherland, to the Secretary of State and to imperialism. Venezuelan Foreign Minister Jorge Arreaza has arrived in Switzerland to take part in the United Nations 37th Human Rights Council meeting. The meeting was set by the United States Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. Geneva is the first stop of the European leg of Arreaza's global diplomacy tour. He wrapped up the African part of his trip with a visit to Egypt on Sunday. Prior to that, he led an extensive tour of South America and the Caribbean in an effort to forge cooperation and drum up support for the Venezuelan government. In Egypt, Arreaza met with senior officials and the Arab League's General Secretary Ahmed Abulgait. 
They discussed Egypt's cooperation with Latin America, and Abul Gait thanked Venezuela and its president, Nicolás Maduro, for supporting the Palestinian cause. The Venezuelan delegation and Egyptian authorities also paid tribute to Latin America liberator Simón Bolívar and Commander Hugo Chávez at their respective monuments in Cairo. One relationship that is not going to plan is Venezuela's ties with Chile. Arreaza denounced comments from the Chilean Foreign Minister Heraldo Muñoz, who said Venezuela is not a democracy. This comes after Chile pulled out of its role as an observer in peace talks between Venezuela and the opposition. Venezuelan Foreign Ministry accused Chile of obstructing the dialogues which were held in the Dominican Republic. In a tweet, he said, We thought that the accompaniment of Heraldo Muñoz in the dialogue would be constructive. However, he dedicated himself to torpedoing and making fun of the process from the first day. The Nicaraguan government has released a statement rejecting the Organization of American States, or OES, position on Venezuela. Nicaragua ratified its unconditional support for the Bolivarian government and Nicolás Maduro. The ambassador of Nicaragua to the OES, Luis Alvarado, said the Nicaraguan government does not endorse the OES Council, its agenda or declaration. It said the organization is illegitimate, illegal, and in violation of international law. It went on to say that it considers the OES resolution calling on Venezuela to postpone its elections as inadmissible and violates the sovereign rights of the people. The Caribbean community kicks off its 29th intersessional meeting today. Their key mission is to find a way to build a climate resilient community. Numerous countries in the Caribbean are still rebuilding after Irma and Maria, two Category 5 hurricanes, ravaged the Caribbean last September. The storms killed hundreds, ripped out infrastructure, and rolled back years of economic progress. The worst among CARICOM states to be affected were Dominica and Barbuda. The group is also raising funds to develop crisis preparedness with the next hurricane season just three months away. Apart from the climate, CARICOM members will also examine the high evidence of crime and violence. In particular, they want to combat transnational organized crime. They will also seek to strengthen travel, trade between unions. Renowned Ecuadorian drug lord Washington Edison Prado, who was under arrest in Colombia, has been extradited to, to the United States. Prado, who has been dubbed the Pablo Escobar of Ecuador, lost his extradition fight and was turned over to U.S. authorities by a 50-man uh, strong security detail consisting of officials from various police agencies on Saturday. According to prosecutors, Prado was the head of a smuggling ring which spans five countries and accused him of being involved in the shipment of more than 250 tons of cocaine to the United States. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this look at what our multimedia colleagues are reporting on. Então, se você é negro, preste atenção nisso que a gente vai falar. Evite sair de casa em altas horas, infelizmente à noite. Tá? Não saia sem documentos. Priorize levar na bolsa, na carteira ou na mochila a sua carteira de identidade ou a sua carteira de trabalho. O celular na horizontal ó, e não é para tampar a saída de áudio, porque a gente precisa escutar o que o ser humano está te parando está dizendo. Nós, negros, somos sempre alvos de abusos, retaliações. Infelizmente, à noite, a partir do olhar do outro, você é não somente negro, mas bandido e apresenta perigo. Evite o uso de furadeira e guarda-chuva longo. Parece bobagem, mas muitas pessoas olham isso de longe e acham que são armas de fogo.
Welcome back. The U.S. has broken ground on a border wall between the state of California and Mexico. Workers have taken down the old metal fence that marked the divide between the two countries. In its place, they will erect a 9-meter high wall. This will cost $18 million and take 300 days to complete. The project was approved by former President Barack Obama. However, the incumbent, Donald Trump, wants to expand the wall and is seeking $25 billion in funding to do so. Well, this... this uh and it's gonna it's gonna help better secure um, uh, our community here. Uh, of course, our, our focus is to protect the nation, uh, protect our communities here, and also our agents. It's gonna be, give us better operational control of the border here, which at times has been uh, in the past a problem for us. The Small Business Association of Argentina says that since Mauricio Macri took office, more than 7,000 companies have closed. They're blaming it on economic policies applied by the government. They are warning that the sector is falling deeper into crisis every day. Workers from the Business Association say that inflation, more imports, and problems with the domestic market are a lethal combination that will damage thousands of companies. We finished 2017 with a commercial deficit of $9 billion. But if we focus only on the industry sector, it was a $35 billion deficit. This means that we have imported more products than the ones we make. I think this policy must be stopped immediately. We want to make suggestions and discuss this with authorities, because industry generates jobs. Experts in this sector warn that small and medium companies, which are the ones generating the most work, are the ones most affected. There have been sudden companies' closures because of the economic situation, and it is not caused by lack of competitiveness. Our companies are competitive. Ariel Aguilar thinks that if Macri's administration could do more for Argentina's industry, it would enable the country to export its products and services to the world. I work with leather. The government said that they will lower taxes for this industry so we can directly export leather. I think it is not a smart decision. Argentina should sell shoes, purses, wallets, belts, because that gives work for more people and redistributes the income. Business owners say urgent actions are needed to reverse the damage caused by loss of business for small and medium companies. Students clashed with police in the Peruvian capital of Lima on Friday over new youth labor laws. Water cannon and tear gas was used by police as protests turned violent when the route was blocked. The new law passed by Congress could see youngsters working up to three years without receiving a salary. In Lima, several Peruvian social organizations are calling for a people's summit, an alternative to the Summit of the Americas, which they see doesn't represent the real problems of the people in the hemisphere. Social and political groups, along with trade unions, have gathered at El Comando Nacional Unitario de Lucha, the National Command of Struggle, or CENUL. This is the organization that will run the next People's Summit, in opposition to the Summit of the Americas, set to take place on April 13th and 14th in Lima. Because we have to reject this free trade model, this model has affected so many people and also allows transnationals to avoid paying taxes. The Lima Group model is a model that tries to implement United States policies in Latin American countries. Social movements also reject that the Summit of the Americas has as its main issue the fight against corruption. When the host country president, Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, is facing serious corruption accusations that could force him to step down. They have the nerve to talk about corruption when we have a bunch of Peruvian politicians accused of corruption. We have the president of Brazil accused of corruption, the president of Argentina and Honduras, and yet they will talk about how to fight corruption when they are the ones who are corrupt. According to the members of the CENUL, the Lima Group is led by the United States and wants to dominate the Summit of the Americas, instead of strengthening integration spaces like UNASUR and CELAC. They want to divide and exclude, like they do with Venezuela. 
They do not have any moral authority to question any Latin American country or president, but in particular President Maduro. We have clearly stated that we are against this. The People's Summit will be a place to listen to the vulnerable people of the continent, like the working classes, indigenous people and the LGBTI community, among others. Issues sure to be absent in the Summit of the Americas. Antigua and Barbuda will hold parliamentary elections on March 21st. Prime Minister Gaston Brown made the announcement during a party rally late Saturday. Brown said the early legislative elections come to protect the many plans his Antigua Labour Party, LAP, has programmed for this year. And the, and the end next year introduced the 17 candidates proposed by his party. Brown has already asked the government general to dissolve the current parliamentary by February 26th. Then he will issue the official call of elections by Tuesday, giving the required minimum amount of days notice for elections. So, the date of the next general elections will be Wednesday, March 21st! Weekend in several cities of Argentina, the Bolivian community celebrate events to remember the day of the lie to support President Evo Morales' run for president for a new term. The musician Mario Camacho was born in La Paz. He arrived in Jujuy 70 years ago, leading his orchestra, and since then has lived in Argentina. But he says that his heart remains in Bolivia. He participated this weekend in the event that took place in Jujuy's capital, Old Station, to support Evo Morales run for a fourth term. He's a great man that has been good to Bolivia. And last night I was watching TV and it seems that a lot of people hate him, but he has made Bolivia better. He has given so much to the youth. He has given endless things. February 21st, 2016 was named as the day of the lie because of false information given by mainstream media. When it said that Morales had an illegitimate son, the news influenced the results of the referendum that rejected allowing the president to run again for office. Our president was accused with so many lies and we are hurt by all those lies. They hurt his image as president, but he's a brother to us, a humble person that has helped a lot of people of our country. Now Bolivia is a country that has great economic income. We are no longer under imperialism. This year, Bolivia must elect a new president, and this weekend, Bolivians in Argentina put forward their support for Morales to be a candidate again. We see a lot of improvements that weren't there before. There weren't any schools, sport courts, markets, paved roads. Today, Bolivia is an example for the whole world, not only for South America, but for the whole world. The Bolivian community events in Argentina were celebrated in several cities and widely attended. And in Panama, the National Police destroyed almost 10 tons of drugs on Saturday. The packages of drugs containing cocaine or cannabis came from different police operations around the country. Officers first cut the packages with machetes and then lit them on fire in a public dumpster. There is an explanation for this amount of drugs. They have warned us about the tripling of crop plantations by neighboring countries that grow cocaine. This is why there is an increase in the processing and trafficking of this type of drug. Lunar New Year is being celebrated not only across Asia but also in South America. On Sunday, members of the Chinese community in Sao Paulo, Brazil, performed dragon and lion dances and put on martial arts shows. The celebrations are being aimed at inviting good fortune and prosperity and chasing away negativity and bad luck. According to the Chinese calendar, each year is represented by an animal. 2018 is the year of the dog. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this look at what our multimedia colleagues are reporting on.
Welcome back. The Communist Party of China has announced that it will remove the two-term condition for president. That paves the way for President Xi Jinping to stay beyond 2023 when his second term ends. The amendment still needs to be passed by parliament, but with Xi's loyals in, the proposal is expected to pass smoothly. This could be a major constitutional reform in the Chinese constitution. Xi is seen as the most powerful leader in the country after Mao Zedong, the founding father of the People's Republic of China. The country has been developing very quickly. The quality of people's life or quality of happiness has been raised significantly. So if she gets re-elected, it will help us considerably and will also raise the quality of people's lives. In Syria, the city of Afrin received a mass influx of villagers from the nearby, nearby Jandaris region. The villagers were fleeing the advancement of Turkish forces and bombardment of their homes. Turkish forces have seized a number of sites at the Jandaris axis over the past week. Villagers can be seen arriving to Afrin in all sorts of vehicles, from cars to trucks to tractors, piled high with their belongings as they enter the city. I'm from the village of Kernu Khan. I transferred my belongings and fled because of the bombing of the Turks, who want to empty the villages, to hit us with missiles. Where's the international opinion? Are they not watching us? The Turkish military started launching airstrikes and rockets on Kurdish positions in Afrin. Shortly after Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced the launch of the military operation dubbed Olive Branch, the Turkish president also declared that the next destination for Turkish forces would be Syria's Manbij. The Turkish warplanes bombard us indiscriminately, bombard the area of Jandaris in its villages. As you can see, there are no human rights, no United Nations. Can we see our situation here? They steal us, kill our children and women. He does what he wants. Turkey views the YPG, which is active in northern Syria, as an extension of the banned militant group Kurdistan Workers Party, or the PKK, in Afrin on Friday, thousands of people participated in the funeral procession of 14 YPG fighters. Destruction, destruction, murder. We lived with death in Afrin and with the beginning of this campaign by the Turkish state. He wants to enter Afrin for one of his wars, while the resistance that began in Afrin will continue. On Sunday, Syrian Kurdish leader Salem Muslim was arrested in Prague at the behest of Turkey, according to the main Kurdish-led political coalition, who have condemned his detention as illegal. Muslim was the co-chair of the PYD party, the major component of the coalition that runs autonomous parts of northern Syria. Also on Sunday, tens of thousands of protesters from northern Syrian cities descended on Afrin in a display of solidarity in the face of Turkey's ongoing offensive. The protesters denounced the Turkish military offensive as well as criticized the silence from the international community on the campaign. According to the organization Human Rights Watch, an estimated 100 civilians have died since the start of the operation. Schoolgirls in Nigeria are still missing. To know more on that and other stories, let's have a look at news from around the world. The government in Nigeria has stepped up its rescue and search operation for over 100 missing schoolgirls who were allegedly kidnapped by Boko Haram militants last week. Air search was conducted on Saturday in the northeast of Nigeria from where the girls were abducted. But the Nigerian Air Force said they found no trace of the girls. It is the biggest abduction since more than 200 girls were taken away by the group in 2014. The Nigerian government has been criticized for its response to the alarming situation. One person has been killed and two injured in the Democratic Republic of Congo's capital, Kinshasa, during a banned protest against President Joseph Kabila on Sunday. The protests were organized by the Catholic clergy, calling for the president to step down. His term ended in 2016 and an election date has yet to be set. The Congo security forces violently tried to stop the protesters, injuring several others. As long as we do not see the goodwill, the good faith on the part of our leaders, we will not stop demonstrating. 
Maybe we will be able to change the way we do it, but we will stick to the end. The Pyeongchang Winter Olympics has been concluded in South Korea with spectacular fireworks. This game saw many landmarks not only in sports but also in diplomatic relations, with North Korea and South Korea taking steps towards each other to improve their decades of troubled relations. All eyes were also on North Korean leader sister Kim Yo-jong and U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and the hopes that talks could happen between the two countries. The talks didn't take place then, but now North Korea has announced it is ready to start a dialogue. Weinstein Studio is set to file bankruptcy after the attempt to sell the company was futile. The New York Studio is co-founded by Harvey Weinstein, the Hollywood producer who has been accused of sexual harassment by dozens of actresses. Talks to sell the companies fell apart when it was hit with a lawsuit two weeks ago alleging a hostile work environment and pattern of sexual harassment in the company. Weinstein has been at the center of the sexual abuse scandal in the U.S. entertainment industry. And allegations against the talented producer led the Me Too movement, encouraging many victims to reveal their sexual abuse stories. And we've come to the end of this morning's news brief. These and many other stories, you can find them on our website at telesurtv.net slash English. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Thank you for watching.